right, fella, fella. So here we have a little something different than what you guys are typically used to seeing Coyote Swap stuff. But I do do other things for uh, for my friends. Um, here we have a 1989 uh, SSP Special Service Package Vehicle um, CHP. It feels a California car, but Oregon. I don't know if it's Oregon State Trooper, Oregon, uh, whatever, but. There are the buck tags that say special service package. You can't see them there, but for the people that are going to say this is not a SSP, there it is there, Oregon Special Service. Um, so this car will eventually uh, get a Coyote swap later, later down the line. So for now, he wanted to do some uh, suspension modifications. Here's my bird, by the way. I'll let you guys check out my bird, my little... Uh, my garage companion, she's super cool. She hangs out with me all day in the garage. She's only like, look at her flexing a little bit. She's only like three months old, so she's still a baby. She's still got a lot of coloring uh, to fill in. You see the yellow coming in on the wings. But it's a Sun Conor, Sun Conor, however you want to pronounce it. Her name is Deborah. I don't know where the name came from, but she's about uh, three months now. So she hangs out with me right here. I know these lights are not good, but it was super... Uh, it's kind of cold in here, and I didn't want her to get cold, so anyway, she hangs out right there while I run around doing these things. But anyway, here we go. 1999 SSP. It's got a sunroof, which I don't think it was factory, but it looks pretty damn good. It's moonroof, I would say, not a sunroof. It's a five-speed car. I believe they reupholstered the seats. I don't know if this cage came in here. Somebody let me know. You know what? It might have came in here already, but uh, somebody let me know. Some of you guys, I know there's a lot of people out there that are like diehard uh, SSP fans. So I actually used to have a CHP. My first coupe was a 1990 CHP, uh, manual windows. Um, it's obviously got a lot of the year specific things, uh, certified calibration, no buttons on the steering wheel holes for the uh, lights. And it says it on the title. So, Oh, here comes my bird. This car has got seat warmers for some reason. And the guy who purchased it, he got it from uh, he got it from somebody who pretty much like will sell vehicles for people that are trying to sell vehicles, older or classic vehicles. And uh, he didn't really know much about it, so it's got like cutouts. It had like some subframe connectors, but it's got like some crazy looking cutouts on it. There's a cutout. It's got GT40 heads, Explorer intake, just very minor stuff um oil cooler like the ssp should have um so what we're doing to it is we're doing a bunch of suspension stuff maximum motorsport cast the camera plates pan hard bar which i just did on a on a coyote swap coupe uh this weekend pan hard bar i box front and rear sway bar uh adjustable lower control arms yellow conies h and r springs uh we're doing a 373 rear end with a uh, Yukon locker. Guys, sorry for the bird. Let me, uh, let me put her away, hold on. I just put her down over there. Hopefully she'll be quiet for a little bit, but yeah. It's gonna get 373s, Yukon locker. It's gonna get uh, Cobra brakes in the rear, drilled and slotted rotors, Cobra brakes in the front, drilled and slotted rotors. And then he's gonna get some um, bbs uh wheels custom made as soon as he gets the car back originally he planned on like getting the car painted and getting everything fixed on it or whatever but i recommended that he leave it like this in my opinion i would leave it with all these little holes you know things like that they tell a story man it, it was a cop car so i would definitely leave those um i wouldn't do anything to the body maybe just get it detailed or whatever but that's it i wouldn't do anything else to it me personally it's his car he can do whatever the hell he wants to do with it in my opinion, if this were my car, I would leave it as is. I wouldn't change anything on it. The exterior, the interior is super clean. We're just doing suspension stuff. That's it. So I'll show you guys throughout uh, once I like install a couple things. These are the wheels I think he's going to take it on. But these are not going to be the wheels that stay on the car. I actually bought these from him, but I'm going to let him use them while he... Uh, while he gets his wheels custom made. He's like a four hour drive from me with a trailer three and a half hours or so. So it's more in the SoCal area. But um, yeah, so I'll post a couple things as I get them done. I'm not gonna do a whole walkthrough on how to. 
Um, I'll do something like on the Panhard bar and then I'll show you guys little things. Uh, here's a part two to the video. It's been a few days. Um, I'm putting on the Panhard bar right now. I've done like three of them in the last month, but I'm putting one on. Um, the only tips I can give you, I don't really see too many videos on YouTube, is make sure you got good drill bits. So what I'll do first is I'll kind of hold it up, make sure it's all squared away and lined up, and I'll dot the um, the marks on the K-member, or on the frame, I'm sorry, with a Sharpie. And then I'll uh, drill them through with just like a small size drill bit, nothing nothing that the bolt will even fit through. I'll drill them through all four. You don't want to drill all the way through yet. Do not drill all the way through the frame. You want to just drill the first one here, and then it's somewhat hollow in here. And then you'll drill out the last one finally. So I'll do that. And then um, I'll pull the little sleeves out of it. Let me see if I can get one out. I'll pull the little um, those little sleeves that come with it. And then I'll kind of measure it going in there, boop, with like a screwdriver or whatever, measure it, boop, mark it off. And then they say to cut it a little bit shorter. So I'll just cut it at the length, and then I'll just grind whatever, uh, whatever I'm a little bit extra, which isn't going to be much. And you want it to sit pretty much flush there. These are that way when you go to tighten it down, you're not gonna squish the frame because believe it or not, you can with the bolt and a nut on the other side, you can kind of squeeze it together. So this is basically gonna be to protect it from collapsing on itself, so to say. So you wanna line up the K-member pretty much here is what the instruction says. You wanna line it up to these, I'm sorry, the pan hard bar. Damn, I'm all over the place. You wanna line the pan hard bar up here to here without overlapping it. You shouldn't have to cut it. You shouldn't have to grind it down, nothing. They say it should sit pretty much flush here. And for the most part, I've never had one that I had to like alter the the, the tailpipes or cut them or go to the exhaust shop, nothing like that. No, everything usually pretty much bolts right up and everything's out of the way. Um, So bam, I'll drill one hole through, two hole, we'll basically drill, one, drill once through, not drill through the back. And then I'll um, and then I'll go a little bit bigger. I'll go in two steps. I'll do one hole, then go the next size up, and then do a five eighths. It is bam. You drill a five eighths hole, which is going to be enough to get this in there. Only here till till this point, you I haven't drilled anything out the back at all. Only through the front of it. Bam. Put your sleeve in there. Then you can put your K member or your panhard bar up. Put a bolt through one of them just to kind of hold it in place. You got someone helping you out. Then once you bolt it up, it won't go all the way through, obviously, because you haven't drilled through the back. But it'll be enough to hold it up. And you want to push it up here like this. You don't want no gap right here. You want to push it all the way up into it. That way it's flush on there. And then you'll drill all the way through the back. That way you drill through the frame. And then you drill through the back side of the panhard bar here. Through this back uh, portion of the bracket. The little U bracket, we'll call it. Bam. Then you can drill all the way through, as I have done there. Then your bolts are ready to go. Now, if you wanted to weld it in, then it would be a better idea to, you know, sand it down, grind it down, whatever you got to do, and then take it to someone to have it welded. Just bam, bam, and then on the inside. Doesn't have to be welded. I mean, they recommend it, I think, but it doesn't have to be welded. So that's that. Um, there's measurements that you're supposed to take. It's all in the instructions, but this will kind of just break it down to you real quick. So remember, do not drill through the back until you're at the final step, which is here. You'll drill through the rest of the frame, through the back side of the frame, and then you'll drill through the pan hard bar at the same time. Bam, both of them straight through, and then you can put your bolt through there. Then it'll pop right in. You shouldn't have to like really manipulate it or not, not having deburred the holes or nothing like that, but bam, it goes in. And that's that. Other than that, I've got a yellow conies installed. I gotta do the calipers. Got a iBox sway bar, H and R springs, bump steer kit, new end links, and a sway bar bushings, new hubs, new drill and slotted rotors, uh, brake lines, all that good stuff. Stock motor 302. Uh, we're doing full suspension on there's a pan hard bar. It's bolted in as of right now I'm redoing the whole exhaust because it had uh, Some ugly ass cutouts that owner wanted to get off. So we're getting those off We're gonna weld this up because we don't need that Eventually down the line. I think he's gonna swap out the motor, but for now this is what we're doing um, new mufflers Bam and then the tailpipes for the people that ask about the tailpipes 
with the pan hard bar, it is extremely difficult to get them in at your muffler shop. So one time what we did is we put the tail pipes on first and then I brought the pan hard bar with me and we installed it here and welded it in place. That seemed to have been easier. This time, took the wheel off, supported the body of the car, let the car hang. And then we were able to get the tailpipe over after we cut it. These are just LMR two and a half inch tailpipes. Had to cut it off, bam. The other piece is right here. It'll go back in place. We'll put the muffler in there. Bam, put the muffler on there and then it just. But that's what you gotta do when you want tailpipes with a pan hard bar. Unless your tailpipes are already in and you're putting the pan hard bar, then it's probably easier, but. finally done. I had to cut the tailpipes in half to get them over the pan hard bar. This usually isn't an issue unless you, uh, if you already have the tailpipes on, it's a lot easier, but there it is. Got some mufflers on it, new tailpipes because they were shit, dude. And then we took off the uh, cutout that it originally had. So looks a lot better now, way better. It should sound a lot better too without all the exhaust leaks.